in this video, we're going to really take you through building a strainer back. And you've seen bits of it in other videos, but this is dedicated specifically to making a strainer back. It's a big piece, you know, it's like 30 something by 20 something. It's pretty large. It's a thin wood frame. And the problem is if you just framed it in this, you don't have enough stuff to put the hardware on. So we'll turn around and talk about that. This is a strainer back. And you can see it's an inner wood frame that goes in behind the frame. It's screwed in from here. And what it does is it gives you a place to keep the hardware, to put the hardware on. It makes everything really solid. And now when you hang it up, you don't have creaky corners. You don't have these pulling together from the wire. And just a couple of points. You don't always have to add one of these if you have a smaller frame. But this is a, you know, pretty big frame. So just to have this to help the wire to stop the wire from pulling these edges in when you hang it. So that's a strainer back, enjoy the video. Okay, building a strainer back, here we go. Rather than measure this, I prefer to cut my first 45, put it right in the frame and measure to the frame itself. So I make a little mark here. Now I'm gonna go over to my chopping machine and we're gonna cut it up. Okay, this fits perfectly. There should be a little bit of wiggle room, and there is. We'll talk about that in a minute. So now I'm going to cut the second one of these, and I'm going to cut two for these sides. And when that's done, we'll show you the next step. Okay, as we showed you in the opening video, I have to drill holes in these. And I need the screw to come through here and just come about this far into the frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is do my measuring. And this doesn't have to be, you know, precise, but you want them kind of even. I like to start with my first screws about four inches in from the edge. So I make a mark there. Now I'm going to do these. I can do the short and the long sides at the same time. There we go. I hate this ruler. It has millimeters on it and I'm easily confused. So anyway, okay. Now for the short ones, we're just going to have three screws going into the frame. So we're going to put one right in the middle, half of 16 and a quarter is eight and an eighth, right there. That's where I drill the holes. And we want to keep in mind that this is going to be in the frame like this. So these holes need to be countersunk and they need to be on the inside of the strainer, not on this side. We're gonna drill on this side in a little while. Okay. For this one, I'm gonna do two screws. So I wanna take, well, that was fortunate. 21 divided by three, that's seven. Seven, 14. I mean, if it was some weird number, I would have stopped the camera and done some ciphering. <laughs> but this worked out pretty easily. So here we go. And that's it. Now, when the strainer is built, when the strainer is built,
there is going to be a wire, which we showed you in the first shot, a wire going from here to here. And as it gets tugged on it, I want there to be strength on this. I don't want these to be able to bend in. So I'm also going to put a brace across here. Now, the brace is going to be screwed in from here, the outside. So I'm going to measure that on the outside. And I think I'll put my wire eight inches down, eight and a half inches down. And the brace goes on the short side because it's a horizontal print. So when it's all put together, we are going to have a series of holes drilled into here all the way around to screw into the frame. And we're going to have one hole here and one hole over here to put the brace in. So now we go over to the drill press. going to join this and I may not have mentioned this before but everything we're covering today is going to be on the test so make sure that you all pay attention here we go So this is an underpinning machine made for putting frames and things just like this together. If you don't have one of these and you're making a strainer bag, you could just drill through here, put a clamp on it and put a screw in there. They make little corner things you can nail over to join these corners. These don't have to be pretty, but the reason I, I use this machine for this is just faster. And doing those other options. Okay. Okay, now we're ready to cut the brace before we install it. And remember, we talked about having a brace going from here to here. So when the wire tugs on this, it won't over time pull these or flex these in a little bit. The important thing when you cut a brace is you want to cut it to this length. You measure here. Because let's say this wood, and it happens all the time, is slightly bowed in a little bit. Now I'm exaggerating, but imagine it had a slight bow in, and that one had a slight bow in, and you measured here. And then you just built into your strainer back whatever little imperfection was in that wood. It could also have a slight bow going out. And if you measured from here, you would have measured that bow into the finished product. So we measure from here. So I'm just going to make a mark with the pencil. And a lot of times when cutting this, I will do what they call sneak up on it. I'll cut it and maybe air toward having it a little bit long. And then if it's too long, I just trim it off a little bit. Let's go cut it. So in a previous video, I told you if I made a mistake, I would show you. In this case, I didn't. It actually fits in here perfectly. So now we're going to screw and glue this in place. All right, I'm ready to put the brace in. And remember I said measure the opening at the corners where it's the true width you want. And remember how nice this fit? 
if you look here, well, let's come over here. Look at that gap. Because these pieces of wood are a little bit bowed. When I screw this together, that's gonna pull in nice and tight. I've made little marks here to show me where this lines up on both sides. And now we're gonna screw it and glue it. All right, now, when you glue something like this together, the important thing is that we get it lined up to the marks and this stays perfectly flush to this. We don't want to screw it in and have this sticking up or sticking down or something. That's why we put these clamps on it. And that's going to hold it nice and tight. I got to grab my drill. That's it. Okay, a lot of places don't do this, but I like to glue and staple in some corner blocks just to keep everything a little stronger. So here we go. So the problem we're solving is this, this really lovely solid cherry frame. It's large, like 27 by 30 something. This is not strong enough to just put hardware into the whole thing and bend, right? So you need to do what we talked about. So this is going to fit in here. And then when the time comes, I'm gonna show you how we screw this into the frame. Okay, here is the strainer back has the extra brace added because the wire's gonna run from here to here. And in goes the strainer back. Oops, goes this way. The other thing you have to do is make sure that this is the top of the print because that's where the wire goes. Let's see how I did. Perfect. Okay, so in the real world, almost nothing is ever really perfectly square. And in the case of building a strainer back that fits into a very thin frame, um, which we can see right here, which is what we have been doing the video about, um, it's not always gonna line up. Take a look here. We're nice and tight here. We're nice and tight here. So if you come down here, you see that gap. And we have a gap here as well. So, Two things you do not want to do. You don't want to make the strainer back so it fits real tight and you have to kind of push it in. That's going to stress the corners out. Um, and you don't want to spend hours planing it down, getting it to fit in here just right. That is also a waste of time. Um, and a third thing you don't want to do, I should have said three things, is if we look at this gap here, I don't want to put a screw in here and tighten it to this piece of wood because that's going to pull this piece of wood in, bend this in here, and that again can stress out the corners. This is all about keeping the corners not stressed out with nice support. So all you do in this case is you put a shim in. So what I'm going to do is put this here so I don't mess up my back of my foam board. Make sure you push this down because you don't want to have this riding up. You want everything nice and tight. Push it down. And now we're going to go in here. So 
Okay, now we just slice the shim off. And that's it. Okay, so when you make a strainer back, you generally don't put that paper dust jacket all over the back. You usually leave the strainer back showing, but you have to seal this so that dust comes into the frame. Now you can use an aluminum tape, which is really nice. Um, it's very expensive, and for this job, this tape will be fine. This is just framers tape. It's an acid-free. It's an acid-free tape, and I like to double up on the inside one, just like that. And so what I'm going to do is go all the way around, and then we'll put the hardware on. 